Time now to bring in the man who scored more buckets for BYU basketball than any other man in the history of the program. He is Tyler Haas. What's up, Ty? Over Zoom. Ty, uh, we're glad that you're joining us on a somber morning to discuss what in the world happened last night against Utah Valley. But let's start with... Are you wearing black as well? <laughs> I'm wearing black. We're yeah, all I'm wearing just black over here. Yep, yep. I've got we've got our Christmas decorations up. I got the fire oh, going. Man. Look at you yeah. trying to get trying to get cozy, trying to recover. Trying guys. to bring some good vibes. I'm sick. Okay. Well, yeah, that's where I was going to start. Is how, how do you find good vibes after a loss like that? And it's tough because BYU loses Gavin Baxter for the season. And I said this to Jerem just a few minutes ago when he went out. There was a notable emotional difference on the BYU bench, and it's hard to overcome that. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I thought maybe BYU can get through this because they're a mature team and they got a lot of ballers on the team. But it just the wind was taken out of the sails of a team that was already down one big man. They're a bunch of sick guys. So uh, how did you see it? I mean, you're watching back here in the pregame through the TV. What what did you see as the biggest impact of losing Gavin Baxter for BYU last night? Yeah, I think they've already been through it once with Richard, right? And now to see Gavin go down, I mean, those two guys, they're leaders in the locker room. They're emotional leaders, very loud and outspoken guys. And so to see two of those guys, two core guys on your team go down, yeah, you could see it uh, on all their faces, even the coaches' faces. Everybody was sick from, from that. And so just, just really really tough to to deal with but you know what this is a part of basketball this is a part of a season um there's ups and downs and you, you know you've got to you've got to learn how to win but you also have to learn how to lose and um you know different guys have to step up and uh but that that loss last night it hurts and it will sting for for a while um yeah you know like like jerem said earlier in the show I mean, you just cannot lose to Utah Valley. I, I said last night, th this feels like uh, losing to your little brother a little, a little bit. Like uh, nothing against my little bro. Your but, little brother you was know, pretty good, dude. The, <laughs> the, the ten-year-old TJ that's talking <laughs> trash and chirping in my ear, right? I, I never wanted to lose to that TJ. So UVU is a 10-year-old TJ to you? Is that the comp you just made there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, certainly UVU is more talented than a 10-year-old TJ. And no offense to TJ. But, yeah, you shouldn't lose. You just shouldn't. And now uh, Gavin Baxter's out for the season. So how does that change things? Because BYU is now going to rely on some talented players but inexperienced in Fusini Traore and Atiki Ali Atiki and, of course, Caleb Lohner. Right. Those guys have to step up and be big. I mean – BYU hasn't, I mean, beside, outside the Oregon game, really BYU hasn't played well offensively. Um, but they, they have done some good things inside, right? We, we never see BYU get outscored in the paint. And last night, they got outscored 30 to 20, uh, outscored in double figures. And so uh, these guys are going to have to be big on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, BYU last night had 15 offensive boards, but only converted uh, what was it five second chance points and so i mean if if these shooting woes continue these guys have to be huge on the glass but be able to finish and put those back right and and BYU has to find a way to play inside out to you know to get the flow back uh, of their three point shooting and to see some shots go in it, it starts with these guys in the paint and, but what's what's got to be comforting to to us and to to all BYU fans is these guys are more than capable i mean those guys really talented yeah they're inexperienced but they can do it they have all the tools and assets and we've seen moments of really good things from from Foos and Atiki and and Caleb we know what he's he's capable of um and he's going to he's going to find his rhythm here and things are going to pick up um but you know these next couple of days are are going to be a little bit dark for these guys I, I I've I've been through similar things we we definitely had our moments uh in my time at BYU and they're dark and they should be dark but that's what helps you get better and, and figure out how to, how to improve and, and get better.
Tyler Hawes, BYU's all-time leading scorer, is with us on BYU Sports Nation, recapping BYU and Utah Valley from a night ago. Some fans were concerned that this loss would negatively impact BYU's tournament resume, like significantly saying, oh, it might be a quad four loss. I'm not of that opinion, Tyler. I think that the way Utah Valley is playing right now, this could very well become a quad two loss because Utah Valley just has to be one of the top 135 teams in the net rankings, and it was on the road. So with that said, where does this loss hurt the most? You talked about the dark times. Where specifically does it hurt BYU the most as they try and push forward and turn the page? Yeah, I think I'm I'm with you, Spence. I, I don't I don't think it's going to be a quad four loss. I mean, the way UVU is playing, um, they're they're going to continue to get better. They won their conference last year. Uh, I see them doing the exact same thing this year and continuing to play well. And so, you know, down the road, I I don't think it'll be as big of a deal. Yeah, it is dark right now, but um, there's still a ton to play for. And you know, Coach Pope said last night. This, this season, it is a journey, and there's some unexpected things that, that come up in the year, and you got to figure out how to, how to deal with them and how to fight. And so, um, you know, I think, I, I think the biggest thing, though, the, bi- the darkest cloud over my head right now is, is, the, is BYU's offense, the shooting. Um, they just seem so stagnant and out of the flow. Guys are... Um, playing a little bit hesitant and deferring to other people. And, you know, I think, I think the, the weird thing is, is we've seen this over and over in, in games that they've won, right? This isn't something new that's happened this year. But outside the Oregon game, BYU has not shot the ball well. Um, and UVU did a good job of taking, uh, taking Alex Barcelo out last night and other guys have to be ready to step up and attack. And, you know, it, I, I just felt like guys were, were looking and deferring to other people instead of, you know, grabbing the bull by the horns and being like, this is my time. I got to step up. Let's talk about the three point shooting. So obviously Alex Barcelo is doing fine shooting 48% overall. Didn't have his best game the last three though, shooting the ball. Um, It's cooled off significantly. Uh, Spencer Johnson's good, 45%. But everybody else is having an issue. Tijon Lucas is good, 38%. Let's talk about everybody else. Caleb Loner, 0 for 9. He doesn't even take threes now. He's not really taking them. Gideon George, 2 for 14. Seneca Knight, 1 for 11. Trevor Nell, 5 for 22, 23%. If BYU just makes a couple of those, Tyler, just here and there, like one, what each of those guys makes one a game. Like that's not asking a ton. I think that changes the trajectory of, what happened last night and, and the season. So I feel like this is something that will change. I don't feel like BYU is going to be a 31% shooting team from three all year. Um, and those numbers actually, I'm realizing right now, are before last night. And last night didn't go well, so it's probably even worse. I feel like that's going to change. Do you feel it will as well? I think so. Um, you know, I've been in locker rooms with with Pope and Figer and been in the gym with those guys. I know they're they're watching a ton of film and they're in the gym with their guys trying to figure this thing out. And, um, you know, as sick as we feel, they feel 10 times sicker. And they the only way to to get that nasty taste out of your mouth is to play another game and to continue taking good shots like we we said it last night, Jerem we feel like these guys are getting good looks. They're shooting really good shots. It's not like anyone's forcing bad shots, but I expect Trev to to shoot a, a good percentage towards the end of the year. Expect Caleb to start seeing some go down. Tijon Lucas, uh, I, I think his percentage can get even better. Seneca Knight's still trying to find his flow. Um, but it, it is early in the year. But I think the biggest thing uh, from a shooting perspective is to continue to take those shots and shoot them with confidence. BYU, they, these guys always talk about owning your shot, right? The, this situation right now, you have to own your shot. Every time every time you get a good look, own it, make or miss, you're, you're putting it up there and shooting it with confidence. And it, it feels like, you know, from a mental perspective, there's some doubt creeping in and some hesitancy, and that just cannot happen. For, for this thing to turn around, you got to be aggressive, you got to play on attack, and you got to shoot it with confidence and, and, and shoot it like you've made 10 in a row. 
I do want to add this spin to the conversation. Let's not forget that Gavin Baxter was playing maybe four or five minutes a half when the season began, and it was Fusini Traore and Atiki Ali Atiki when Richard Harwood won out. And so they've gone through some significant growth experiences. I just think in the moment, in the road, hostile environment, losing Gavin, gutted for him, that, that that's a lot to overcome. So, Tyler, how much do you trust the BYU coaches to get the big man situation right before Missouri State and the remainder of non-conference and right the ship? Is a couple of days enough to remind those young guys that they've done this earlier in the season, or is it going to take some more time? I mean, I definitely think there will still be some growing pains. I mean, these are young, inexperienced guys. But like I said earlier, these guys are capable. They're talented. We've seen moments of uh, their capabilities early early in the year. And so if anyone can get them right, though, it's Pope, it's Burgess, it's Fieger. These guys are gym rats, and they're going to dig into the film and and – sit down and, and talk with these guys and figure out ways to improve and bring them up to speed a lot quicker than uh, I think anybody expected. And so, you know, another point, another thought is these guys are big men coaches, right? I love Pope for, for everything he did for me from a guard perspective. And I, I can't even imagine what he'd be like as, as a big man coach, because that's his, that's his go-to stuff. And same with Chris Burgess. And so um, no doubt those big men inside are going to be relying heavily on, on those two. Um, but I, I expect them to, to pick it right up and um, you know, but there, there still will be some growing pains and, and guys have to be patient with the, those two, but they're capable. Tyler, this has been cathartic for me. Looking at the fireplace behind you, the Christmas decorations, talking through things. Show, show the, us the fireplace again. The, the world's nice. not ending. Oh, nice. Oh, it's, that's. Uh, I feel better. Is so that a TV be... screen? Or is that a real? It looks, <laughs> looks got, real. Got the TV screen, yep. No, I mean the fire. Yeah, trying, trying to just cope, guys. You know? Yep. It's, no. it's rough. I, I'm, st I'm still sick. This one will hurt. <laughs> yeah. the, the lighting in that room's amazing, by the way. You look, you look incredible. <laughs> wow. Hey, thanks. That's. And we got to get the things important when you're on the television. Yeah. Tyler, great to talk with you, man. Uh, we'll do it again soon. In fact, all season long. If you like what Tyler has, has to say. Yeah, next Wednesday. You'll be with us on Countdown to Tip Off yeah. once again next Wednesday.